Hey, M0A Nation, Jason Shepard here, M0A.com. And today, as we end out the month of February, I wanna spend some time talking about some IFR flight planning. Now, it would take me uh, an entire month worth of series and webinars and in-flight coffees to talk about what I do before each and every IFR flight. And each, each IFR flight has its own differences as well as to what we really do. But I wanna share with you briefly here what I do days before an IFR flight really starting on the ground. Because one thing we've been talking about on In Flight Coffee, In Flight Coffee is a show we do on Facebook Live every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to have you check it out if you're not already. But one thing we've been talking about is once you fall behind the airplane, it is inherently difficult to catch up. IFR pilots, you know that is a true statement, right? You start falling behind that airplane on that approach and you are, you're still going through the sky at 90 knots and it's so difficult for you to begin to catch up. So what can we be doing on the ground? Well, where I start on the ground and on my comfy couch, days before an IFR flight, if I know I'm going somewhere, I'll start by looking on my iPad at the airport's actually approach plates. And I'll work through and I'll brief those. Let me just show you kind of how I do that a little bit now. So this is an approach plate for uh, Tallahassee's GPS runway 18. And I'll brief every single approach, by the way, for Tallahassee. Confirm, this is Tallahassee 18 at TLH. Who's ever briefed the wrong approach before, right? Approach course 184, touchdown zone elevation 83, my missed approach, climb to 3000 to Hemux and hold. I grab my ATIS, approach, tower, ground, highlight these things so they jump out at me ahead of time. Now the frequencies will be the same across most of our approaches, but where it's different is right here. Custy could be my initial approach fix. Sig A could also be my approach fix. I also see Jatma as my final. Then I kind of have, I'll call it an intermediate fix. Lord knows how to pronounce it. X, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that one there. But anyways, from there, I wanna go and further annotate this. It's one thing to just highlight this. It's another thing to really add to it. So I know I'm crossing Sig A at three thousand feet. I'm not a big fan of a lot of head movement while I'm flying, so I'm going to put a big 30 for 3,000 at Sig A so I know that. What about Jatma? Jatma's 2,000 feet, no lower. So my final approach fix of Jatma, I should be grabbing my glide slope at this point, 2,000. So I'll put a big 2,000 there so I know coming through Jatma, 2,000. So I'm kind of looking at one place. I'm adding content, if anything. What about this, we'll call it an intermediate fix, I guess. That's not technically what it is, but uh, starts with an X. We'll just go that way. A weird 920 feet, oddly enough. So let's just put that in there. It's on the chart just so we have that. So all that is good. Okay, so we've got that kind of set. How can we further annotate this? What else is next here that we're doing? Well, we can also look at what, what happens if I have to go missed with this? Well, what does every missed approach start with? A climb. So let's use an emoji for an up arrow. Climb to blank, you know, and then we put in what we actually go up to. In this case, it's climb to three thousand feet. So on my mist, climb to 3,000. I'll get the turn to, I think it was hexma and everything else here in just a bit. Now I know I am shooting this as an LPV approach. So I'm bringing this down to 333 feet. I'm highlighting that. I'm adding that there as well. And that's something else I could further annotate and add my 333 just so I know what I'm actually bringing this down to. I'm going to put a P there for precision approach. And I'm actually going to put a 4 for 400 feet. Because by the time I get to 333 feet and realize and go missed, I perhaps have gone below that already. So I always round up on the, on the cautionary side of that. I'm only going down to 400 feet is why I'm looking at that and I'm making my decision at 400 feet. Am I leaving some behind me? Maybe, but that is, that's my option with that. Let me show you what this actually looks like just so you can see it, kind of um, full screen here. So you can see what that looks like, highlight it up. I will go through and I will do this for every single approach at Tallahassee because I don't know what approach I'm going to get, but I know, and you are smart enough to know as well, that. If the first time you're seeing this approach is when you're going and, and 
flying the approach and getting vectors for it, you waited inherently way too long to have that happen. We have to be learning and doing these things on the ground. You know, I'm friends with the team over at Avemco, and I love Avemco. They put out some great, great um, studies every year. They're privately held companies. So they're, they're able to release a lot of great data. And in one of the most recent reports, you're not going to believe this, 11%, 11% of their losses are what they call a taxi loss. And that is somebody with their head down trying to figure out the programming, with their head down trying to pull up an approach plate or a taxiway diagram or whatever it is while still moving the airplane forward, 11% of their losses are taxi losses. That seems very unnecessary to me. Get everything we can ready on the ground. I gave you an example of briefing your approach plates here. VFR pilots watching this, you can do the same with your taxiway diagrams. You could look at the notums and go, okay, taxiway Juliet is closed and the market is red, so I know Juliet is closed. That way, you're not spending this head down time. You could be mastering the Avidyne, mastering the G1000 from their iPad simulator apps or on a Microsoft flight simulator or x -plane or something like that on the ground. Because Avemco is just one insurance company. I guarantee every other insurance company has their data too that says we have, you know, 11, 10, 15% perhaps taxi losses because people like you and I are just too distracted, too engrossed, or too behind the airplane already. Oh, we're taxiing. It's so unnecessary. So that's just really one of many, many things. I'm sure later this year we'll dive into an entire IFR series. Next month, for the month of March, we're getting into this episodic, doing everything in series based, very similar to the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. I hope you loved the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. It won't be as much content as that every single day, but we're going to start to dive now into series. And the series starting next week, you know, we publish a video every single Tuesday on YouTube and Facebook, and then it'll coincide with our ground school member only webinars, in-flight coffees, everything else. The series we're diving into is called The Fundamentals, and we're working to get back to the basics. But I'll actually be creating and showing you kind of some little lesson plans that you can be doing to make sure you stay sharp on the basics, the fundamentals, but of course we'll be doing them in an engaged way and infusing the science of learning in everything that we do. So that'll be on YouTube and Facebook next Tuesday, first Tuesday in March, the podcast. And you know we produce four podcasts. You can find those on iTunes and you're on YouTube and Facebook as well if you'd rather watch them. In-flight coffee on Saturdays. All our content, the webinars for just the ground school members, is going to relate to the idea of the fundamentals. So continue to keep on learning, consuming that content, hop in the new ground school, all of that. You all are such a blessing to us, my family, our team, our mission here at M0A.com. If there's anything we can do today, this week, this month, this year to make you that safer, smarter pilot, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.